Aditya 200 Mbps speed deka ke. Sri Lanka ve vegavat masaha pulul tama home broadband sambandh tave vana. SLT Mobitel deshe fiber bala vege opat adam atvidinna. Hari masudui. Tonight on 1st at 9, this Saturday, the 1st of April, 2023. Strict action. No breach of law and order will be tolerated, President Ranul Wickremesinghe assures during an address to the Triforces and police. New legislation. The new anti-terrorism bill to be presented to Parliament this month amid opposition. Disciplinary action. Petroleum trade unionists sent on compulsory leave meet former President Mahinda Rajapaksa in the hope of his intervention. Roadshow accident. Two students from Badulla die in tragic accident during roadshow organized for their school's big match. Alliance Finance Mitru Run Nai Sevave Run Pong Kata Propel Eklaksha Hatta Dasaka Ila Tikarma Obe Vishwasi Dino Sinsudain Then Lagamati Pharmacy in Labaka the Hacker. at 9 with Indivadi Amuata live from Studio 24 in Colombo and a warm welcome we take you straight to your top story tonight where President Ranil Vikramasinghe said he will not tolerate any breach of law and order during his tenure as Sri Lanka's head of state delivering a special address to the Triforces and the police from the Air Force base in Anuradhapura, the head of state said that Sri Lanka should take appropriate measures to counter the implications of the superpower rivalry in the Indian Ocean. Further, President Vikramasinghe said he has informed Minister of Justice Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa and Minister of Public Security Tiran Alas to take strict action to counter the drug issue. A special statement was delivered to the Triforces, police officers and other rankers by President Ranil Vikramasinghe as the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces at the Air Force Base in Anuradhapura. Rate Swadi Natwe Kian, Deshapan Swadi Nate Pamna Nemi, LT Vagas Trastavadin, Parajek and Nekutra Nemi. A country's independence is not only its political independence. It is not about defeating terrorist groups like LTTE. If we did not have any economic strength, we would have lost our independence by becoming indebted to other nations. The government is undergoing a massive restructuring. We will reduce expenses on each sector. Many institutions have stopped new recruitments. We must think about the future. This is relevant to the Triforces and the police as well. No one will be removed. Many question as to why defense expenditure is introduced. We reduce the way we can this year. However, the Triforce personnel and officials serving at the Defense Ministry will reduce by 2027 or 2028. It is not an action taken by us. That is due to the retirements following the completion of their tenures. As a result, the expenditure will reduce during that period. This will not apply to other sectors of the government. We had to increase the number of police personnel due to the current level being inadequate to protect law and order. The rivalry of superpowers have begun again. This time it will affect the Indian Ocean. It is already there in the Pacific Ocean. They are trying to bring it to the Indian Ocean and I am trying my best to stop it. New defense techniques to suit the rivalry needs to be implemented. This needs to be done. We do not know what will happen in the ocean. We do not know what will happen in the sky. We don't know if our army personnel will have to be sent to another country. We will introduce the Defense 2030 program to prepare for this. The police must work towards protecting the country and control the drug issue. I have instructed ministers Tiran Alas and Vijay Dasa Rajapaksha to introduce strict rules to control the drug issue. Not only the police, the Triforces too will be deployed for this. I am here to do the right thing and not the popular thing. As long as I am the president, I will not let the law and order to be breached. Your opinions can be expressed peacefully. 
You can obtain permits for meetings and school me, but do not try to erupt violence. Taman resmi mak itu permit ya kerja na resmi mak bawa tu lo orang kan mata bayi ni taman ni. Itu meten tak villa, hari gihing, kola hal keran tu be. Now, the Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena says the new anti-terrorism draft bill to repeal the Controversial Prevention of Terrorism Act will be presented to Parliament during the third week of April. Commenting on the draft bill, Minister of Justice Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa said the bill has removed the executive's ability to issue detention orders and has empowered the judiciary for the purpose. The Justice Minister also said that no person is able to define the new bill as a draconian piece of legislation. The Prevention of Terrorism Act came into the books of law in Sri Lanka in 1979 as a temporary measure during the conflict with the LTT. However, later in 1982, it was made permanent by the Sri Lankan government. Since its usage following the enactment, it was heavily criticised as a draconian piece of legislation by factions, both local and international. During the past few years, the Sri Lankan government was accused of using the PTA to repress protesters, human rights activists and civil society groups. The United Nations human rights experts call for an immediate moratorium on the use of PTA and urge the government to substantively review and revise the legislation to comply with international human rights law. Due to the massive public pressure, the government took measures to prepare a draft bill to repeal the Prevention of Terrorism Act and it was approved by the Cabinet in October last year. The bill was published in the Government Gazette on the 23rd of March this year. Expressing his views, Minister of Justice Dr. Vijay Das Rajapaksa says the bill was prepared by adhering to international laws and referring to anti-terrorism legislations of other countries. Under the PTA, the powers to detain the people were exclusively vested in the executive, namely the president. But under the new act, the issuing of detention orders by the hierarchy of the police is only with the approval of the judiciary. And therefore, all these activities are subject to the judicial process. Proceedings. And therefore, nobody can now bring an argument that this is a draconian law as it was under the PTA. If one examines the laws relating to prevention of terrorism, many other jurisdictions like India, United Kingdom, German, France, the provisions in their laws are very stringent than the provisions that we have introduced under the present bill. Speaking further, the Justice Minister explained the importance of an anti-terrorism legislation to protect the rights of the people. There are some criticism by using some of the provisions of the bill, the government is trying to suppress the rights of trade unions or to oppress uh, the activities of trade unions, but that is a misleading statement because all these provisions where that there could be any kind of disruptions to the general public, prevention of the obstruction or the essential services to the people, all those provisions in the bill have to be understood and interpreted, reading together with the definitions that we have given for terrorism, that is section 2 and section 3 of the bill. And therefore, under the present law, under the proposed law, everything will be subject to the judicial control and court will oversee the proceedings. The main criteria in making a law of this nature is to balance on one side the national defense, the, on the other side the rights of the people. Without a law to prevent terrorism, no country can survive, no state will survive in the today's context. And we have addressed the basic norms and principles accepted in the international law and other jurisdictions and we have carefully drafted this bill. In this backdrop, the government plans to present the anti-terrorism bill to the parliament in the near future. Hatra and then Pasma Pirasene, April Masi Tungani Sati, Enisa, Tungani Sati, Nia Patreta, Atulat Kota, Dinanima Karaganima, Kara. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa alleges that President Ranil Vikrama Singha is conspiring to destroy his party, the Samagi Jana Balavekya. Addressing a public gathering in Dehivala, the opposition leader went on to claim that the government is violating human rights of the people in the name of preventing terrorism. <laughs> Trustavade Velakti may Alut Panata. Then may Alut Panata Tula, Mayrate Trustavad in Hatita Hadumanatane, Gurti Samiti Samajiki, 
शिष्य प्रजा बुद्ध जनता व त्रस्तवादे वैलक्त्री में नामे जनता वगे मानव आयती है उल्लंघने करना रचया मुरंडु रचया दरदनु पालने एकाधिपति आज्ञादाय कत्वय रटतुल निर्माणे करला दिवन तमंट हितवत समाज माध्य केंद्र करके ने ये किएना समग्र जन बाल जगे मंत्री वरु रटा बंकलत करपु में आंधुत तक संबंध विन्दे न आएगी अबे कट्टी आंधुत टेन वाल मेरा टे विपक्षे प्रधान पक्षे वन समग्र जन बाल जगे विनाश कीरी में कुमांत्रण या रानील विक्रम सिंह का जाना दिपते वर्या आरंभ कर लती है हम मंत्री वरु कोट देन सूदा नमलो मिलियन देसी then Siddha Venne, Andu Venne, Galavi Galavi Vipakshate Neka. Uba Hitana Madha, Samagi Jana Balavege, Mantri Varu, Laksha Deda Hata, Mantri Kama Pava Deno Aikila. A group of petroleum trade unionists met with President, former President Mahinda Rajapaksa to discuss their issues and the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation's move to send several employees and members of trade unions on compulsory leave for disrupting the fuel distribution process and essential service in the country. Following the meeting, the trade unionists said they remain hopeful that the former head of state would intervene to resolve the matter. A strike action was launched by petroleum trade unions in protest of government's alleged attempt to privatize the CPC and to hand over the fuel distribution to foreign parties. On March 29th, Minister of Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekhar said the CPC management decided to send on compulsory leave petroleum trade union leaders and members who handed or rather hindered the fuel distribution activities the day before. He added that they had exerted pressure on the employees who were engaged in duties of fuel distribution and had attempted to obstruct those services. The energy minister added that action was also taken against the workers who supported the union leaders. In a tragic incident, two students of a leading school in Badullah are reported dead after their vehicle toppled during a roadshow this afternoon. Now, the roadshow had been organised in view of the school's big match, the annual cricket encounter with its rival school. It was reported that 15 students were on the cab when the accident took place and eight of them were insured and admitted to the Provincial General Hospital in Badullah. According to hospital sources, one of the deceased had succumbed uh, to his injuries upon admission to the hospital while the other student was reported dead while being transported to hospital. The accident took place near the new stadium in the proximity of the Vincent Dias Cricket Stadium in Badulla. Following the incident, the two schools have decided to call off the big match. Badulla police are conducting investigations into the accident. And market ex experts and analysts expect investor confidence with more dollar inflows following the IMF bailout. Details after this break. Kodamata Pirani Karana Balapunu Ankarya Mahindra Yuvo Demo Vithin Apiko Supercenter Aradhi Super Shopper Amazing 50% discounts Shop for 7,500 rupees or more with an Apiko Privilege Card including 5 nominated brands Let's go Apiko Supercenter Addakim Bahulavinva Takshinika Danuvin Sanadh Pirisakage Sevia Niraturuva दशक हाय कतवड़ा वैरी आद्य कीम ताक्षणिक निलंधारीन एकस्य है तो पास देर को गे सेवे रेलंका इंश्योरेंस
take you to business news now. Market experts say the IMF bailout has boosted investor confidence with more dollar inflows, resulting in the rupee's appreciation during the month of March. Experts also say that debt and capital markets are experiencing dollar inflows following the IMF bailout. Recently, commenting on the exchange rate, Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Veerasinghe said determining the exchange rate is a difficult bet to win due to its uh, de uh, dependence on the demand and supply in the market. So during the month of March, we saw significant appreciation in the Sri Lankan rupee. So there has been a significant volatility in the currency. So with the announcement of the IMF package, there was a lot of inflows into the economy with the investor confidence significantly increasing. And with it, we saw even the locals significantly converting the dollars that they held into rupees, uh, worker remittances coming in. And so there has been a continuous increase in tourism earnings as well but the most uh, biggest factor is that there has been a lot of inflows that come into the economy because of the confidence that came in with the announcement of the IMF so for example in terms of the capital markets we saw significant inflows coming into the debt and equity capital markets for the TBS and T bond section over 30 to 40 billion rupees of inflows came in and then we saw into the equity market also around a billion rupees of inflows uh, coming in so that identifies the investor confidence increase with the IMF program when central bank governor dr. Nandala Veera Singh was quizzed on where will the rupee settle at the end of the year at our current affairs program at Hyde Park on other 24 he said the exchange rate determination is a difficult bet to win now our exchange rate determination regime is a market based demand and supply based exchange rate determination that's why we have seen the movement in the recent past we have when the supply was high exchange rate appreciated rupee appreciated from 367 level to came down to 315 even and then when on the days that import demand exchange demand for picking up it went back to 330 40 close to 45 level and then recently with the IMF money coming in again there was a high supply then rate came down back to 300 now it's completely market driven market driven based on demand supply and also will settle on the economic fundamentals in the medium to long term based on what the current one deficit what's the fiscal deficit those are the key factors this is where it would be difficult for anyone to credibly predict where the exchange rate would be next month month after this is all depending on several factors like I said import demand, demand for imports demand for exports potential inflows foreign direct industry inflows capital flow inflows all these things are the factors this is why there was a recently company called fish solutions it's not fixed ratings solution made a prediction saying that it will be 309 by end of the year on the basis of assumption saying quote in the president's statement saying we would have six billion dollars per annum research and going forward this is in fact factually incorrect this is why we why we restructured it because we need to bring down the service burden in the next several years not from six billion dollars per year to bring down a much more sustainable level if you don't restructure it if you start repaying our distress meeting dollars obligation without restructuring obviously again it could be depreciated even more because uh, we know we don't have sufficient resource if you are to pay six billion dollars per year then there are a lot of pressure on the action rate so this is where i think one is is a wrong assumption and wrong interpretation and also is technically no one can confidently and accurately predict for any country the exchange rate which is determined by the market demand supply it is a difficult bet to win for anyone my request for anyone please don't bet on exchange rate it, it will be a losing bet we will make sure you will lose if you bet on exchange corporate leader Shiroma Kure says the contribution of females during a crisis hit period is essential to fill the gaps created in the labor market due to the migration of skilled labor and ensure that Sri Lanka comes out of the crisis soon. Speaking at an event in Colombo recently, Kure also said the levels of female labor participation at working places has reduced drastically and said that this needs to be addressed immediately. 
The event, Women's Policy Action Network, was held in Colombo recently under the theme Reforms to Empower Women During an Economic Crisis. We know over the years education has improved and girls have equal access to education. But in spite of that, we men, as we all know, and in spite of having 52% of our population, women are only about 30 to 35% of our labor force. So even if I say it's equal opportunity for girls to go to school, I think all of us know if we are coming from a marginalized family and there's limited resources available and there's a girl and a boy and that amount money has to be decided as to who is to go to university. I don't have to tell you who's going to get the money, right? It's the boy who's going to get it. So that also happens, maybe not in the circles we move in, but that's very common in, in the rural areas. Until these things change, it's going to be very difficult to change this perception. In politics, it's really a shame. We have only 5.3%. I don't blame men. Women themselves had an opportunity to elect women into parliament, but we didn't do it. I think we should stop the blame game and see what we can do to help this situation. Then it's also told that 58% of males, there was a female to male labor force participation rate has dropped from 58% to 45% in 2021. So these numbers are falling. They were much more before. And then even at a senior and middle management level, it's even less. It's only 25% of women at senior and middle management level. If you take the directors on boards of all the listed companies in the Colombo Stock Exchange, only 9.5% females are directors. So that just shows that the women participation and as you say, uh, their ability to contribute is very little in Sri Lankan society. So in our current economic context, with every citizen now has to contribute, right? We are in a crisis situation, we have to contribute. And most of the younger, able, capable people who have had the free education, they're going abroad and leaving people, by like aging people like us, uh, to carry on the work. So that is all the more reason why the women need to come into the labor force. They have to come in and do their part and make sure that the country also comes out from this current situation we are in. No economic policies alone is not going to help. We need to change society and our thinking. Women are generally said to learn fast and they become highly productive if they are taught a skill. But so lack of sufficient skills hampers these people from doing something important. Also in other news, the price of imported milk powder will be slashed with effect from midnight. Accordingly, the price of a packet of milk powder weighing one kilogram will be reduced by 200 rupees. With that, the new price of a kilogram of imported milk powder will be priced at 2,900 rupees. Meanwhile, the price of a packet of 400 grams of milk powder will be reduced by 80 rupees to 1,160 rupees a packet. Now, in other news, veteran Sri Lankan actor Amara Siri Kalansuriya passed away this morning at the age of 82. A renowned actor of the Sri Lankan cinema, theatre and television, Amara Siri Kalansuriya appeared in numerous notable popular movies during his acting career spanning over five decades. Kalan Surya made his first film appearance in Hantana Katawa alongside late actor Vijay Kumar Tunga and was also a leading actor in Sri Lanka's first teledrama, Dimutumutu, directed by D.B. Nihal Singha, an accomplished Sri Lankan film director. As a theatre actor, Amarasiri Kalan Surya produced and acted in the play Podi Vijay and returned to film with Shilpa Denumana in 2001, directed by Rodney Vitana Pathirana. Amar Siri Kalansuriya has received several awards during his career as an actor, spanning over five decades. In 1974, he won the Critics Award for his performance in Ahasgawa, as well as the Presidential Award and Sarasavya Award in 1986 for his performance as the Best Supporting Actor in the film Pooja. According to family sources, Kalansuriya's remains will lie at a private funeral parlour in Boralla for the public to pay their final respects. And that's all on the news tonight. Good night.